only in the Macintosh version of Microsoft Office. We also put back the work menu, which people like. We also wanted to make sure that Word 98 was a great upgrade for Word 5.1 users. So if you like the Word 5.1 interface, fine, you got it. You just put Word 5.1 menus, you get the Word 5.1 menus, toolbar, ribbon, ruler. Even every command key equivalent is exactly the same as Word 5.1. Another uh, thing we thought was very important to do was to support QuickTime VR and QuickTime 3.0. So every Office application supports QuickTime VR, and you can see a QuickTime VR panorama or video, or QuickTime 3.0. All the stuff Peter showed you will work in Microsoft Office. We also want to make sure to support Macintosh drag and drop. So we do that inside of all the Office applications. So if our first goal with Office was to create a great Macintosh product, our second goal was to create a product which was easy to use and where all the functionality was easy to discover, to really leverage the promise of PowerPC and G3. Office 98 is not about creating some high-end features that only 1% of our customers are going to use. We spent over 80% of our effort working on tasks that every single user will do every single day. And we can do that because Office 98 watches you work, learns from you, and adapts to work just for you. For example, suppose I was writing a letter to my friend Steve Jobs. I'll type, Dear Steve, the new Office Assistant will pop up and tell us that there's a great new feature in Word called the Letter Wizard, and it can help you get a letter written faster, more quickly, more efficiently. It'll tell me all about the letter, and then I can write the letter. And then when I'm done with the letter, it'll tell me that Word can also now help me make an envelope or make a mailing label, features you might not have known that Word had. In this case, the assistant's given us new information and helped us all about, help us, uh, help us. Uh... It's also pretty fun. Um, by the way, this Macintosh Office Assistant is only available in the Macintosh version of Microsoft Office. Hate to be boring and redundant, but it's kind of fun. So. Uh, we also want to make the assistant a place where you can always go for help whenever you have a question. For example, suppose we're printing, we're bringing up the print dialog, and we're kind of confused, so we cancel. Well, if I click up on the assistant for help, because we've been watching you work, we'll automatically suggest that you might want help on printing a document. So we'll offer you help on printing a document. Sometimes, of course, though, we try to guess we may be wrong. We admit that at Microsoft now. And so we'll let you type in a question in your own words, in plain English. For example, how do I make a web page? When I type that in, the assistant will tell me how I can create a web page. Again, this natural language technology first is the first time we're delivering technology like this I'm on the Macintosh. <clears throat> because we have natural language technology built throughout Microsoft Office, we can also help you correct spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes right as you type them, right as you make those mistakes. For example, whenever I have a grammatical mistake, Word will underline the mistake with a green squiggly. And then by bringing up a context menu, a Mac OS 8 context menu, I can correct the grammatical error. A spelling error has a red squiggly, and I can bring up a context menu and correct that. Also, only in the Macintosh version of Microsoft Office, we have a new feature called Quick Thesaurus. If you're bringing up a context menu on a non misspelled word, we'll give you a list of synonyms, and you can automatically change that word to another word that you like. How many of you use tables in Microsoft Word? Well, we thought tables were too hard to use, and we thought we could do better. We thought, what if you could just take a pencil and just draw out your table, and kind of make the lines just exactly where you wanted them to be? Wouldn't that be easier than the old way? Well, that's exactly what we did. Nobody could figure out how to merge cells. It was too hard. So we thought, what if you could just take an eraser and erase the lines in between the cells? Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that be better? What if you could type text and rotate the text and have it work just like you wanted it to work? Well, we do that inside of Microsoft Office, uh, inside of Microsoft Word 98 as well. So that's Microsoft Word. There's actually a lot more, but I'm going to jump over to Microsoft Excel right now and show you some of the improvements we've made there. People have been entering formulas inside of spreadsheets for, uh, for about 20 years now, ever since we first had spreadsheets, and we thought they were too hard to. And we thought we could do better. For example, if I have a spreadsheet where I'm looking at costs over sales, and I want to understand what costs over sales are, like in this spreadsheet, why do I have to type equals B3 over C3? Why can't I just type equals cost over sales and have my spreadsheet, my computer, my Macintosh, my PowerPC figure out what I want to do? Well, in Excel 98, we do just that. Type cost over sales, and it works just uh, fine. 
and then I can move that formula throughout the rest of my spreadsheet using autofill inside of Microsoft Excel with our natural language technology inside of Office. Another thing we found people had problems with was, uh, well, people sometimes made mistakes in spreadsheets. And when you make a mistake, it's really hard to find out where the mistakes are. So we added a new feature called the range finder, where we'll associate every range inside of a formula with a color-coded box. In order to fix the mistake, we can just resize that box or move it over, and the formula gets automatically updated. New inside of uh, Microsoft Excel um, 98. Another thing our people wanted us to do, our, our users wanted us to do, was have more richer formatting inside of Microsoft Excel. So just by bringing up a contextual menu, I can now rotate text inside of Excel to any angle I want um, with a graphical control. Another thing that really upset users was that they could never figure out how to indent text. They'd go and add these really, really skinny columns or type a whole bunch of spaces. We thought that that was just, we did a bad job. We thought, why don't we just take the indent control from Microsoft Word and stick it inside of Microsoft Excel? So we did that. Things were a lot easier, we think, than ever before. We watched people print documents. And every time people printed out a long document, the page breaks were never where they wanted them to be. We thought we could do better. So we added Page Break Preview, where we'll show you your page breaks, and where you can just pick them up and drag them and drop them, and put them exactly where you want them to be. Our third goal with Microsoft Office was to integrate communication and collaboration directly into the product, so that we could eliminate artificial distinctions between productivity work and internet work, and let you use the tools that you've been using for the past decade to work with others on an intranet or to create content for the internet. For example, suppose I'm uh, uh, working um, on a budget. We want to have many people work on it at the same time. With Excel 98, any number of users, whether they're working on Macintosh or on Windows, can work on the same spreadsheet at the exact same time. Now, after people do that, you might want to wonder, might wonder what has everybody changed? So just by picking the Highlight Changes command inside of Excel, we'll show you with color-coded boxes who has changed what cell, when they changed it, what they changed it from, and what they changed it to. I hope that blue text in the upper left of the spreadsheet with an underline is familiar to most of you because that's a hyperlink. We support hyperlinks now inside of all of Microsoft Office applications. So you can hyperlink between Office applications, between Office applications and HTML um, files, all inside of Microsoft Office. And then you can navigate back and forth using the web toolbar inside of all of Microsoft Office applications. We'll also support Save as HTML from all the Office applications, so you can create your content inside of Word, Excel, or PowerPoint and save it as HTML and put it right on your website just like that with no additional work required. Finally, I'd like to show you the latest addition to the Microsoft Office family, Microsoft Outlook Express. Microsoft Outlook Express is our new internet standards based email client. We support well, every internet standard out there, POP, SMTP, SMTP, POP3, SMTP, IMAP, LDAP, all ins and most importantly, we'll support HTML inside of Outlook Express so you can put web pages directly inside your email messages and have all the richness of the web page inside of your email messages. We also have a contact list inside of Outlook Express so you can keep track of your contacts, their names, their addresses, their email addresses, their web pages. And best of all, this contact list is integrated with Microsoft Word. So if I do a mail merge from Microsoft Word, I can use my contact list from Outlook Express. Outlook Express is also integrated with a spell checker in Microsoft Word. So as I'm typing my email messages, and I, if I make a spelling mistake, we'll see the same red squiggly line appear inside of my email messages and be able to correct that with a context menu, just like in Microsoft Word. We also have quite a few features available only in the Macintosh version of Outlook Express. For example, I can switch users without even exiting my email program or even rebooting my Macintosh, which we think is great for a family where everyone has a separate email account. And again, that's only available in the Macintosh version um, of Outlook Express. So I've shown you, well actually, I've kind of just like skimmed the surface uh, today um, with, uh, with, uh, with all of the features inside of Microsoft Office 98 and Outlook Express. If you'd like to see more, I encourage you to come to our booth, the Microsoft booth, or go to the Apple booth, where Apple's also demonstrating um, Microsoft Office 98 and Internet Explorer. And we're also giving away free copies of Internet Explorer 4.0 and Outlook Express um, on the, um, uh, on the uh, Microsoft CD, which we're giving away for free at the Microsoft booth. Finally, I just want to promise you that this is just the beginning of Macintosh software at Microsoft, the new way we do Macintosh software. We promise 
we will be continuing to develop great software for the Macintosh, built for the Macintosh from the ground up for our Macintosh customers. And we're really looking forward to uh, doing that and delivering you great products and working with Apple to do that. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Ben, and to the whole Microsoft team. I've heard a few boos turn to yahoos out there. Um, we're, we're starting to see two phrases come back to the Macintosh software market. First on Macintosh, and only on Macintosh. <clears throat> now, Macintosh has always been the preferred solution for users. But we have a lot of customers who have to manage enterprises, be they corporate or academic enterprises. And they need industrial strength applications in finance to human resources to be able to do that. And we have today, we're today announcing that we have partnered with Oracle to do this. And Oracle is bringing their, I think, 40 enterprise applications to the Mac. Everything they've got. Larry Ellison, the CEO and chairman of Oracle is on Apple's board of directors as you know. We have a very close working relationship with Oracle and to demo some of these applications right now is John Wookie, VP of Financial Applications of Oracle. Um.